Marlon Vera, you're on half the battle with Dan and Shaq. How's it going, man? All good, bro. All good. Getting some rest and getting ready for the second Monday, Monday tomorrow. Yes, sir. So, How man, are you? I'm doing amazing. Did you see uh, Dustin Poirier and Anthony Pettis throw down last night? Yeah, that was a badass fight. I knew it. Probably we're, 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 we're taking the win. He's, he's doing great lately, and that was a great show last night. Good banter with fights, and I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. The fights are getting better, and I'm there with the time. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the Bantamweight fights, man, what did you think about Rafael Asuncao and Marlon Moraes getting the wins? Well, Rafael, uh, he, did, he did great, you know. Um, Matt Love is a great wrestler. We turned before. He's a nice guy. Good jiu-jitsu. But he has put pressure. I, I, I don't know. I think Matthew frees a little bit. With a heavy hitter like that, you can understand the fans. Just waiting for a punch, you know. A punch land, you will go down for sure. And probably oh, the, 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 the weight got put an issue here, like the weight, so probably he got a hard time. You never know. It's hard to judge, but it was a good, it, it was a good win for us and South, and it was a good opportunity for Matthew. And then Marlon Moraes, that was a close fight, but, but he beat Dawson. Dawson, Dawson he, he, he decided, you know, move a lot. He, he's not a guy who runs a lot. He moves a lot, but he kind of first set fighter. Um, but I think Marlon just throw more and put pressure. I and mean, he lost the fight the same way he lost to Lineker. He thinks I think he's thinking he's doing enough to win, and then he just let on the judges' hands. You know, like just doing a lot trying to win. He just kind of stop when he thinks he wins the fight and he just moves, and then he said. Super talented fighter. I just think he's too small for the division. Yeah, that's a good point, man. And you brought up Lineker, so I got to ask you, man. You just went three hard rounds with the hardest hitter in your division. You know, when other people take those shots, they either get knocked out or they stop fighting for you. You took the shots like a champ. You came back. You won the third round. So, I mean, what did you take away from that that performance, man? I mean, you got to see what you were all about against the top five guy. Well, you know, I always tell this to you or to anybody I talk in my interviews. Like, I'm, I'm always turning. Like, if I, I'm, I'm not turning the last two weeks because my foot wasn't clear. I'm clear to train now, so I'm, I'm back on the, on the mix. But I'm a guy that I'm weighing 151 this morning, so that means I'm keeping my diet clean. I, I, I'm hoping to fight again. I'm not getting crazy. Like, oh, I need to fight anytime. Like I will take my time, but when I say I will take my time, it, it's not it's not more than a month. So for us for a fight, or if they call me if they call me early, that's good. But I'm just always trying to be ready and healthy to to go in there. The only reason I don't step on those fights that people get injured in the last week is because my foot wasn't clear. Now I'm clear. Now I wanna train to see what happens. If, if I'm good, I'm good, and now we'll start asking for a fight. But my fight. It was. I think it was a pretty close fight, and um, I think I lost that fight because I figured it out a couple things kind of late, and also normally Lineker come forward all the time. I was ready for counter, but he was smart. That for he got a lot of experience, and he's a bad motherfucker for a reason, and he kind of played the game of staying the outside and see and uh, try to fi- figure me out, but. He wasn't able to figure out my attack, but I uh, I find out lately, and I was trying to put him out. I, I should make more numbers because he lands and I go forward. I land and he and he, and he make and, and, and he make a face like he was worried. So I I was really upset. I lost the fight and I couldn't go up in the rankings. But at the same time, I I I put my name on the to all the guys and they're like. I, I know that fight, a lot of guys I know, I don't give a fuck, I would say yes all the time, I fought anybody, because I know I got the skills to fight anybody, but I want to be losing in slot decisions. Lose is a lose. I don't care if you get knocked down or you lose in a super close decision, it's the same, you lost. What I want is to say winning again, and I, w- I will work my ass even harder than before, and keep, my, keep myself the same and just try to win fights now. Yeah, Marlon, uh, I think you pretty much hit it on the head, man. I think uh, it was a case of getting started too late. But it was so interesting because Lineker has, you know, a reputation of, 
you know, busting guys up early and still breaking them late. But what was going through your mind when he was actually the guy on the ropes in that third round? And, I mean, it looked like he wanted his way out of the fight. Well, I, I, I was just looking at his face. He was, he, he, was, he, he was all broke. He wasn't, he wasn't worried. He wasn't scared. He was, he, 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 he was needing to that bell to win. And that, that's crazy because I was just feeling like you're going to give me four more rounds and I will bust this guy up. Like, if you give me probably a minute, I will knock him out back. I, I can be a dumbass and talk like that because that won't happen. I, I should do earlier, but I think the first round, it was even like we we just kept each other. Then the second round, he lands, I land. I when I kick, he kicked my leg. I fall down in the ground. So he got thirty seconds of 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 ground and pound. That he, he wasn't like he was destroying me. He, he lost a couple of shots, but I was throwing arrows and I was trying to do something. And then the third round, I walk him down completely. Uh, in my mind, that fight would be a draw. Like no problem, a draw. Like. Because the first round was even. Second round, he got 30 seconds on top of me. And then the, and then the third round, that, that that was a race. He was running for his life. And I, and I was, like, chasing him. Like, I was, like, tell, I was telling him to come on. And that's the first time that guy rejects a fight. And that just let me know a lot about me. And that, that just motivated me to, to understand where I am right now. And, and just keep going forward from there. Yeah, man, it was crazy because, uh, like we said, it looked like Lineker, you know, he was fading in that fight. And if you had two more rounds, you probably could have, you know, gotten a decision there. But, uh, I mean, the fact that you did that against, you know, a top five Bantamweight, I mean, shows that you can stack up with the best. I mean, I know you'll fight anybody, but is there anyone in particular? Well, right now, uh, I try to slow down myself a little bit. I, I, I like to learn how to live like 100 miles uh a day, but I, I just want to wait and let, let my coach figure it out and my manager what, what to do next. And if they, if, if, they, if they tell me, if they make me a question, they know I will say yes. So now, like, I don't have a name in specific, you know. Like, I just, I just want to fight and go back in charge again. I'm still as hungry as before. I'm still motivated. I just don't want to rush myself. Like, I'm John. I, I, I don't have to bought my career because I just want to do crazy things. You know, sometimes you gotta do the right thing and be crazy lately in your career. No, not at the beginning. I gotta prove myself now. I gotta go up again. Even if it, it, it was a close fight, a loss is a loss. And I don't like that shit. So uh, I gotta work hard. And, uh, there's a couple more fights in, in December. So if somebody's hurt, if they don't find an opening for somebody, I'll probably jump in there. Yeah, they actually just booked uh, Rob Font versus Tomas Almeida. You hear that? Yeah, I, I saw that. I'm always watching who's fighting, on, and that's a good fight. I, I, I think I think that, that that will be a really good fight. And he, uh, but, uh, talking about Rob Font, Pedro Munoz looks really good when he gets that choke, but I think it was a little bit of uh, kind of bad decision from Font. Like, if Pedro Munoz hurt you, you don't shoot for a double. Like that, that's the worst thing you can do, and he did it. But he, he, he was a good prop, props for Munoz. He he got that choke. So I don't know who's available right now. Um, nobody could get hurt, but that, that that's like a title fight in elim- elimination. So those fights are like probably hard to get. But there's a couple more coming up in December, and I'm sure there's bunch of with needed to fight yeah and like you said man you're still young you're only 24 years old and i gotta ask you though a lot of people consider john lineker to be the hardest hitter in your weight class i mean is he the hardest hitter you've ever faced well brad Tinker is pretty fast and he's way more technical but obviously in any case just like he throws bombs but he throws so hard that the problem is, like, people get too scared. Like, in my mind, I just think, like, what's the worst that can happen? Somebody turn my life out? That's no big deal. We're fired. We gotta, we, we gotta have it in our mind that that can happen someday. So, I wasn't scared of getting knocked out. That's why I was able to perform. But I saw people that they get hit in the stomach, and they're like, they shake their bed. I'm like, you get hit all the time in the spire. Like, why do you shake the bed when you're fighting? There's a lot of people getting scared with Gavin too because, oh, he hit hard. Yeah, but everybody hit hard, trust me. 
who that who like probably the look Augusto Mendes. He's probably the best Jiu Jitsu guy in the division. That guy come on fucking suit hard. And you know what? He's not scared. And he's not doing bad in the UFC for being a Jiu Jitsu guy. He's good. But people just get scared. You need to hit hard. Don't get me wrong. Like my ribs were sore the next day. But we are sore every day of training. So I think like when people get too scared about something, they get hit, they shed the bed. And they just close the eyes and get knocked down. Or they start swinging against Lineker and they get, they, they get knocked down because they do the wrong thing. He is hard. He, re, he is really hard. But I also kick really hard too. So you have to be well prepared and trust yourself. Like if you, take, if you take a fight, you must be ready. Or you, you must be needing the money for it. But, but if you need the money, you shouldn't shed the bed. If you prepare, you shouldn't shed the bed. Sometimes people just take the fight because they like the media and they like to be interim fighters. I'm a real fighter. I prepare myself because I want to be a world champion someday. So that's my thoughts on on that linear power. Yeah, he is really hard. I'm pretty sure if he caught me going in, he probably put me out. But I was trusting in me. I was I was ready to that fight, and I was actually thinking of putting him out. Like I was I was literally thinking of knocking him out the whole time. I was on elbows, I was on knees. And I, I, I should only make like more points and I probably get the win. So, Marlon, I mean, you were throwing some big kicks, some big knees. Were you surprised at how solid his chin is, man? Because he ate a bunch of those shots and I was like, oh my God, like how is he still standing? I I knew that he had a pretty good chin. He's a guy that has a... Like, I was very respect, irrespectful, but he got a big head. Like, that's a big guy. Like, he's, he's a little guy, size-wise, but he's wide. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't like typical guys that are really buff upstairs, and then his legs are really skinny. This guy is like, he's like, he's like one-dimensional. He like, big chest, big legs, big arms. He got a fucking huge neck. And, and I, I read an uh, article that was saying about why Roy Nelson, he never gets knocked down. Well, after Michael Hunt, but before that, it's because the muscles from the neck, they're pretty strong. And Lineker got a pretty big neck. Like, that guy got a neck. And I was I was throwing. Like, I was trying to break his jaw again. But I got to give him props to him. He, he, he's a tough guy. And I, I always say this. These guys bring big balls. Like, this guy, he can be losing the whole fight. He keep throwing hard, so it was a good experience for me. It will help me. It will, it will, this will help me in my future, and it only will get me better. But I won't give him props. I I, I was saying I will I I, I I will beat him. I think I think I I do I do my best. I fight hard, but I don't get it. But I I, I would say I oh, the guy can take it. I I throw a couple big jabs to his face. I normally. Put people out with those jabs. Like I told my jab and people fall down. The guy was like keeping bringing forward, but I just I just show what I got. I show my tools. Like normally, when you're losing, he always keep going forward. Last round, he was running away, surviving. Like he knew it. He knew it. He was almost out. He knew it. Yeah, man, and uh. You know, uh, I heard you uh, say earlier that, you know, you guys are training very hard. And, I, you know, I follow you on Instagram and I see you, uh, you know, doing some CBD oil sponsorships. Uh, is that Does that help your uh, recovery after training? Yeah, that's actually really helpful. Like, I, I, I bought my food. The doctor said it was broken because the MRI showed, like, a lot of weird things. But God, God bless and I got nothing. It was just, like, a big bruise in the bone. But... I'm not, I'm not using much ice. I'm, I'm only taking TV in the morning at the night. And I think it really helps. Like, I understand what this is banned because this is like, these products are probably cheaper than the medicine you buy at the pharmacy. And obviously, the big companies want to hide the natural things and they want to put all this chemical bullshit on your system. That is the same thing. Like, I could take I I could be taking ibuprofen every day, but that thing will hurt me at the end of the day. If I take CBD, they won't hurt me never. So, but I'm glad it's going to be legal in the year because this don't get you high, this don't make you a better fighter, this is nothing on you but just inflammation and 
helping his name and relax. Like this thing, it, 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 it's like it's like turmeric. It's like ginger. It, it helps you for for inflammation and things like that. So I try to be as healthy as I can be, and I'm glad I work with this company. Yeah, and Chito, man, every single fight, you make such big improvements. And I know we've talked about this every single time that we speak, but, you know, the first time I saw you fight, you know, versus Psycho Belchan versus Roman Salazar, compared to now, you're going out there knocking out Brad Pickett, submitting Brian Kelleher, and having a three-round great fight with John Lineker. So, I mean, man, what's a, what's the, the ceiling for Marlon Chito Vera, man? Because it seems like, you know, within the next half year, you will be in the top 15. Well, I, I always say like, I cannot be selfish. I got, I got people on my back. Like I, 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 I bring my work ethic, but that's not enough. You need to have like professionals on your back. So why I'm improving? Why I'm, why I'm showing different things is because Colin Oyama. This guy like is I'm truly happy and blessed to be working with him. He's, he's just not a good coach. He's a nice person. Like, if I need something or somebody needs something, he will help you. If you want extra work, he helps you. He's not the guy that put the money first. He's the guy that put his heart first and he tried to help you. So I'm just like I'm just feeling like all the time I'm in the gym, he showed me something that helped me. He's he's, he's improving my basics. He's improving my you know my my weird kicks and my things that I throw for angles. Like he's always I'm gonna hey you know what you gotta mix your wrestling. We got Alex Perry. He just signed with the UFC. He's my he's like my wrestling coach. I used to came with okay wrestling. Now my resume is getting better. Then we turn with Ken Planet Jiu Jitsu. We have great uh, staff in there. They got really good techniques. And the team is just, is just getting better. We have a bunch of fighters from South America. We have one from Brazil. And the team is doing great. Like, you know, Yama is, is having a, a good fighters taking place in the UFC, good fighters, upcomers that they're going to the UFC soon. And, Everything, everything that you see developed in the fighter is because who they have in the back. I know the fighter is the one who did the job. The fighter is the one who put the face to fight. But without the preparation and the tools that your coach gave you, you won't make it so far. So I believe in that. That's why I, I'm a family man in the home. And I took my gym as my family too. Yeah, man, I feel like uh, Colin Oyama doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he's got you, he's got Alex Perez, he's got uh, Carla Esparza, Brent Primus, I mean, Humberto, Humberto ben- Bendene. I mean, the guy produces uh, UFC fighters, Diego Rivas. And, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, like you know, your prior, your prior training situation, I mean, like, is it just complete night and day difference that you're training in the States now? Or do you feel like you would have always been at this level uh, regardless of where you were training at? Well, it, it, the dishes are crazy. When I was in Ecuador, it was really like, it was just like, let's do something today. He was hitting me three times a day because there was nobody to work. And then my training partners, they were my really good friends. They are my really good friends, but they, was, they wasn't prepared for help me. They, they were just people that were trying to help me because they loved me. And we were trying hard, but there's a point that you can win a, well, you can win one or two like that, but then you won't make it far like that. And then when I move out here, I I got a good fighting coaches. I got a fucking great conditioning coach that is Cody Bailey. Like you can see all my fights. I'm 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 not dying. And and I've been in a couple of wars lately, like Brad Pickett, that was a fucking fight. Then the Keller fight well, that was short that was that was that was that was short only a couple of minutes. But then the the Lineker fight, that was three rounds moving and interchanging punches with that guy and my condition is good, like Gara was taking shit that you cannot uh condition your shin. All you can. The the better is your cardio, the world you're prepared, the better is your diet, you will take the punch better. And he he was talking about he'll back up his words because T didn't recover from that punch. But Garvin don't recover from that kick. So, I believe in that. I believe, like, the better you prepare, the better you can take the punch, and the better you can take the risk. So, Marlon, you mentioned how, look, your technique has been improving leaps and bounds since you've been training in the States. But if you go back and you watch your fight with Henry Briones on tough, look, you've always had the fight in you. You've always been an aggressive guy. You always come to fight. 
So let me ask you this, man. I mean, is this a mentality that you've had your entire life or is this something you've had to develop along the way? Because what I'm trying to say is that you've always been a true fighter. It's just that now the technique's improving. Well, I'm, I'm from Ecuador. My dad is, 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 is pretty wild. Like, it's just the environment I, I grew up. Like, my grandpa, he was always taking me to the, to the, to the roster fight. Uh, my dad, you know, born in a, in a, in a farm. Like, get up and gra- grab the cows and do some man work. And nobody was pushing me. That I used to like those things. Like, I used to wake up at like 4 in the morning, milk the cows, do something with the employees, go back, grab a machete, cut something. And, you know, it's just, it's just how, how I grew up. My cousins, just for fun, make me, fun, make me fight in the street with the poor kids. They were paying kids to fight me. And it wasn't like they were pushing me. I was like, hey, hey. You should go and grab somebody to fight. So I, I just I just grew up, you know, living 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 the wildlife. You know, my family. You know, I, I come from a good family. Like we're super. Uh, like we do everything together. Me and my cousins, we really tight. And it's just like the environment I grew up. Like my cousins, they never trained fighting, but. They used to be like kind of respect when we went to play soccer. People would say, "Oh, those guys can fight, or those guys are tough," you know. I know uh, it's just how I grew up, you know. My 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 mom's uh, brother, he's up like a lot of pit bulls. So I just think it's the environment I grew up like. Somebody in the family do something cool and crazy, you know. My dad let me shoot his gun when I was a kid. I don't know. Uh, I I uh, I, uh, I I I I feel like I grew up in a really cool family. That we did really cool things, and that turned my fight, my fight inside. Like I always like to fight. Like I used to fight all the time, but I don't knew I didn't know how to do it. And I got my ass kicked all the time in the school. But I was always picking fights, not because I was a bully, but it was because I I liked the feeling of being in a fight. And and then when I finally saw Pride and UFC, I was like, okay, I will be there someday. That was when I fought Pickett. It was crazy because. I used to watch his fights in WBC. And this way I know I know so much about MMA because I all I always used to watch fights. Even before training, I always bought the DVDs and just watch it a week later, download the UFCs and watch it on my computer. I was all about fighting and be like kind of a coward because I was born over there and just be every weekend working with my dad in the farm, riding a horse boots, you know, jeans, and, you know, probably that life makes you do something, probably it's not, probably it's not tied to fighting, but it's close to fighting, you know. No, 100%. And, man, I mean, you've come a long way from buying, you know, UFC and Pride DVDs because now, look, man, you're the face of Ecuador MMA. I mean, you're, uh, you got a, the Pepsi sponsorship. If we go to Ecuador right now, you're on the billboards, you're in the bus stops. What's a, you know, what kind of responsibility is that for you? And what kind of pressure does that put on you, you know, that now, like, you're the face of Ecuadorian MMA? Well, definitely there's no pressure in that because uh, I'm not a guy that I'm trying to, to fuck this up. I'm just a guy that I'm trying to build this up and just make it bigger. And it's obviously a motivation for me. And uh, I, I remember this from the Spider-Man movie when his uncle told Spider-Man, like, a big power requires a big responsibility. So I'm just trying to, to get better, not just as a fighter, but as a person. Like Just try to be kind and help people that need help because that's all about Like It's not about only to be the best, but it's about to be the best outside. Like Try to help the most you can. Try to send your hands to people who need it and just just be kind to people. And that's what really matters. And keep your... Keep your same attitude all the all the time, you know. That that's what people really like. Like all these today's bullshit. It's just it's just fucking annoying. All these guys that win a couple fights and then they turn into the complete dicks and those guys. Yeah, they're cool for the moment, but nobody will remember those guys because all the fans they have is the fake fans they get for be like that. Like. I always say this, you see somebody like Minotauro or GSP, they never did this before. They talk a little bit, yeah, they say they will win the fight, they say fuck you, but that's okay. But they never cross the line. Like, these new trash talk 
it's, it's all bullshit. And it's the media fault because they only promote the guys that say fuck you or do stupid things. And I truly believe, like, look, GFT come back, won his fight, and he's still being the same fucking guy, super humble, kind, and he's going to fight and win the fight. And that's what, that's what you need. This is martial arts. This is not not the streets. This is not who's the the the, the meanest guy. And those things sometimes bother me. And sometimes make me think, like, I should change my type of thing. I should start being like that. But my insight is something like, no. You just be you, and that, that, that's how you will, you will make it bigger. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because, it, you know, that is... That basically is how the game is going. You know, the guy that uh, the guy that talks a lot is the guy that uh, generally gets what he wants. And, you know, like, you know, necessarily I don't think it's a bad thing, but could you ever see yourself, you know, possibly getting into a back and forth with a guy just to hype a fight? Because then at the end of the day, everyone's going to end up tuning. And if you back up your words, then your your name value goes way up. Well, I, I definitely got a personality. I can, I can talk, and I always say, I will finish the guy. I always, I always say something about the fight. I'm not a quiet guy. Um, I can definitely do that. I can get to the high level of something because I'm, I, I can talk shit, but I just don't get the guy like, like to, to do it yet. But I just, I just see so many fake people these days trying to pretend being somebody else, and that's the thing that is just not right because those guys, then they start losing fights, and then what? So, I fuck up my words. I say, I want to respect the guy, I want to the guy, and I do it. I know I won my last one, but it, it, it wasn't a bad fight. It, it, it was a close fight, but it could go anywhere from the outside of the team. And then, I, I, I used to believe, like, if I have the right opponent that I don't like, I would definitely talk. Because I'm not a quiet guy. I'm a guy that would speak my mind, because... I, 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 I'm not scared to get in trouble from saying what I think. And, and that gives me. I, 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 I don't give a fuck. I already did a lot of things in my life. I left my family. I literally left my, my son when he was a little boy. When he see me again, he didn't recognize me. But all, all what I did, it was, it was for the family. So if, if, if somebody is a guy that is down for anything, I already do a lot of things for, for them what I want. So. And I will keep doing it for 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 them. Where I really want to be a champion someday, and just be a just be the, the best fighter in my division, and spread good energy, good energy to everybody. You know, uh, Marlon, I, I have a theory that, you know, the, the longer body frames, you know, in these divisions like yourself, like, for example, how in that third round you started finding out your range against uh, Lineker and, you know, picking him off at distance. But I've had a theory that the longer body frame in MMA is going to uh, end up taking over. Um, do you agree with that theory? And, I mean, I know you're training with Oyama, Coach Casey. Um, is, is uh, you know, using your range going to be um, more of uh, your main uh, weapon? Going forward, yeah, definitely. It depends on the fight, you know, it, it depends on the matchup. Like I can, I can use my range, but I'm, I'm also, I'm also like the knee a lot, so I can fight in close missions. And then my jiu jitsu is not, it, it's good, so I gotta start using it to like, to make fun. Sometimes I try to knock the guy out, and then forget I can, you know, just take him down and take him apart. But definitely the the, the long, the skinny guys, they're doing good these days. But sometimes it's not it, 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 it's, it's not about your size. Like I really don't believe your size. Like I, I sometimes I think I go up weight class just because this weight class thing is it, killing people. It's bad for for the sport. But uh, it's hard because there's there's a guy that costs from close two hundred pounds in one forty five. So it's not it's not it's not fair. But I'm, I'm considering doing that in the future because. That what what I really think is not the size. It's about your heart, your work. That's what people say. I really don't believe that it's a size. I really think about the size inside you. What your heart drives you forward to make things. And because there's a guy that there's Kelvin Gaston. That's a legal guy for eighty five. That guy is tough. That guy is skilled, and he goes and fights. You saw Carl, Carl, he was doing great lately before Darren Till beat him, but Darren Till is a guy because of a lot of weight too. So, 
I, I believe you. It's all about your preparation and your determination that would drive you forward. But I, I'm not ultimately a big guy. I was weighing 151 today. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of answer weights two weeks after the fight, they don't weigh 151. Because a lot of them, that's what they weigh the five weeks. So, Marlon, before I let you go, man, how's this commentating gig been going for you, man? Because I know you're a guy that knows a lot about the sport. You truly watch it. And I've seen you and Santiago Ponzinibbio. You're doing your thing, man. So how's that going? Uh, it's been pretty well. Like, I'm doing my homework. I'm, 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 I'm not just watching the fights. I'm trying to call the fighters that I know. Or if I know the coach or I'm friends with somebody from the camp. I just make a couple of questions just for get some more info for the fans. Like, oh, I talked to this guy and blah, blah. But I'm doing my homework. I, I really like the thing. And my goal is to do it like, you know, like like Paul Felder, like doing the real UFC, like inside the cage. Those, that, those things that I feel I can do it pretty well. And, you know, it's all about work hard and stand like step by step. But I, I'm pointing my eyes to do it that someday. Well, Marlon, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us right here, right now on Half the Battle. It's always a pleasure, my man. The fans can follow you at Chito Vera UFC. And Marlon, you have any message for the fans before we go? Yes, yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't stop chasing what you want. And no matter how dark the road gets, there's always the light coming at the end if you really chase it and you work hard.